What is the divide between the, the Shias and the Sunnis? Look, uh, I have videos that talk about the origins of the Shia and stuff, but let me just put it very simply. Right? The Quran says in Surah Al-Fatiha, in the beginning chapter, that every Muslim reads and every prays, that only Allah do we worship and only Allah do we seek unseek, unseen help from. Right? So that, so, so that means we only seek help from Allah. The Shia, they will say, Ya Ali, O oh Ali, help us. And even when they're getting up, they're like, Ya Ali. Instead of saying, Ya Allah, they're calling, Ali ibn Abi Talib is a great companion. We love him. He's a great person. But we don't worship him. We don't call on him for help. The Prophet didn't do it. The companions didn't do it. Ali didn't do it. Peace, may Allah be pleased with him. Hassan Hussein, his sons, we love them. They're the grandkids of the Prophet. They were righteous and pious. They didn't say, Ya Ali, help me. So you see, they've innovated into the religion. They're asking other than Allah for help. And this is shirk. This is not permissible. Right? And shirk is the greatest sin. It's the greatest sin. As Muslims, we need to unite upon the way of the Qur'an and the way of the Prophet ﷺ. No more Wahhabi and this label and that label. No, come together. We have the Qur'an. We have the authentic sayings of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Did, did Allah tell you to call on Ali? No, he said, call on me. Call on me, I will answer your dua. So as Muslims, we only ask Allah. We don't ask the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for help. We don't ask Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him for help. We don't ask Jesus. We ask only that one creator, the one that Jesus prayed to, the one that the Prophet Muhammad prayed to, peace and blessings be upon both of them. The one that Ali prayed to, that's the one Allah. And when the Shia have things like temporary marriages, even though the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a hadith narrated by Ali radiyallahu himself, said that this forbidden, Allah forbid this in stages, like alcohol was made haram in stages, but it was forbidden by Allah. In Sahih Muslim, you can see the hadith, then we don't do temporary marriages. That's wrong. As Muslims, we don't date, we don't do haram, we get married in the halal. You know, if you need to get more than one, get a second, third, or fourth, that's fine, but do it in the halal. Right? But we don't, we don't go into those things that are haram. This practice of 10 minute and 10 day and 3 day marriages, this is not part of Islam. Taqiyya that all the Christians pre are talking about is not an Islamic principle. This is a Shia innovation. We stay away from all of that. So we, Muslims we condemn together. the Shias? We do. We condemn them. Not because they call themselves Shia, but because of those practices. Okay. We, we call them back to the Quran to worship only Allah and seek help from none but only Allah. So what was the, the story we were talking about in the car? Uh, you wanted me to remind you something with the in-laws, with the family. <laughs> I want to hear this is a good story. So, you know, when I got married, uh, I, I went to Pakistan to get married. And, and my in-laws, I love them. They're really good people, you know. Um, and when they were giving advice... It was, it was a culture, because I was raised out here, right? And I was raised in the hood, and I was raised in the body. And so when I got married from Pakistan, from a village, uh, it was a very different type of atmosphere. So when I went, my in-law sat me down, my father-in-law sat me down, and my wife was there. And he said, look, uh, I raised my daughter with full yani, hijab and niqab and all of that, and I raised her honorably. And if she goes there to America, because he didn't know about America, but he knew there was a lot of corruption, and she starts messing up there, it's your responsibility to make sure that she stays on the religion. He didn't, like, I was shocked. I was like, man, this guy is not telling me, like, oh, no, you got to be, let my daughter do what she wants. No, he was like, look, and, and, you know, he's not like a sheikh or something, you know, but he was a very good person. That's beautiful advice. Then my mother-in-law sat with me, right? And I was, I was kind of like, you know, okay, she's going to be like, oh, it's my daughter, you know, let her do what she, no. She sat down, she turned to my wife. She said, look, you're getting married. And now that you're married, your husband is your world. You come back here to this house as a guest or may Allah protect you. But if you die and you come in a coffin, that's it. Otherwise, that's your house now. Make it work. You know, it's beautiful advice. You know, that's the kind of thing that makes a marriage work. You know, when you, when you say, you know what, I'm in it for the long, I'm not just going to jump in and jump out. You know, the first fight, we're going to fall apart. No, you got to make it work, right? And Alhamdulillah, I've been married... I don't know, too many years. <laughs> uh, I got married, right? Yeah, I got married in 2001, so that 22 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, alhamdulillah. I got four kids, alhamdulillah. You know, we homeschooled them. And uh, alhamdulillah, they, you know, academically, they're very good. My son Yusuf graduated 4.0. Alhamdulillah, he 
top the state testing. I mean, not just, okay, from getting grades, but the state testing. My son Musa just graduated this year. I'm really proud of him. He was graduated with honors. They gave him like a special robe, you know. So, alhamdulillah, I got two young daughters. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And they're all involved in the da'wah. You know, Musa, mashallah, he does our editing. He's our editor. Uh, Yusuf is involved in keeping up with the new Muslims and setting up the shahadas and all that. And this is this is the way you raise the Muslim family, you know. Inshallah, Brother Sneeko Very soon. will be married with a good Niqabi religious sister soon. That's the goal. And he's not going to be messing out any speed datings anymore. He's going to no. be getting... <laughs> no, it's a waste of time. I mean, it's good entertainment, but it's not very... No, no, inshallah. We love our brother Sneeko and everybody that's hating on him. Look, this is our brother. He's new in Islam. He's learning. You need, you need to cut the brother some slack. You know, you need to make dua for him, pray for him, that Allah gives him steadfastness. And helpful brother, our brother Andrew Tate, you know, this is just me sending out some salam to you as well. He gets a lot of criticism from, from Muslims online. You know, he does. And, and, and look, I, I don't watch a lot of that stuff, to be honest, but he's our brother in Islam. He accepted Islam. He didn't have to. He didn't get paid for it. He only got hardships from it. And he's sticking to it. Uh, you know, if he's sitting in bed reading Quran, great. Alhamdulillah. There's nothing in the Quran that says that's no, wrong. No, nothing wrong with that. It's better than him sitting in bed reading you know, you know what I mean, right? right? So he's sitting in the bed reading Quran. People are like, "Oh, I, I, he's got his shirt off." So what? There's nothing in the Quran that says nothing, this false. Nothing in the Prophet that's wrong said that this is wrong. Yes, we respect the Quran. We we're, we have good etiquette. But if you're sitting in bed reading Quran, Alhamdulillah, you're reading Quran. So our brother Andrew Tate, you know, if you ever need any advice, support, we don't need to do it online. I'm not trying to get clout. We're here for you. You know, our brother Sneeko, we're here for you. Anybody that becomes Muslim, I don't care if you're a YouTuber or social, we're here for you. You know, we're your brothers in Islam. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we have that brotherhood. You know, we're not here to be jealous. We're not here to judge. We're here to support. 